So, uh, welcome. Welcome on stage, uh, Adam Nardone and Tom Pagliato, as you say, uh, the uh, UK dealer principal and chief technician. So, good to meet you, you both. Um, just a bit of background on Koenigsegg, ladies and gentlemen. We were just having a look at this. It was founded in 1994 in Sweden by uh, Christian von Koenigsegg. I met him recently. Such a lovely gentleman. Um, they, they, they built their first street legal car in 2002, then in 2005 went on to build the world's fastest production of motor cars that's the most achievement in such a short space of time. Obviously aided by very good technical staff, I guess. Um, in 2006 they introduced the CCX, um, aiming at homologation uh, worldwide, that's not as easy as you might imagine, and uh, that was, uh, that was the reason they built that car. And in-house design as well, which is interesting. Yeah, which is rather great, than yeah. go and buy somebody else's engine, they design their own in-house in engine. Absolutely, and, and, and it's not just the engine, it's the looks of the car. And in 2009, the CCXR was listed by Ford as the world's most beautiful car, a title coveted by many manufacturers, I'm sure. Uh, 2010, and we're going back still 13 years here. The Ajera won the BBC Top Gear Hypercar of the Year Award. I'm just punctuating a few smaller awards. There's many other awards in between in this time frame, ladies and gentlemen. But we've just uh, picked a few highlights. And in 2017, the Ajera RS set a new world record for the world's fastest production car again. This time at 447. 0.19 kilometers an hour. What's that in uh, miles per hour, Richard? Approximately 277.87. Approximately. Very impressive. Well, so oh, we don't have any notes, do you just calculated it? Yeah, 277.87 miles per hour in a road car uh, is a pretty astonishing thing. It's Way back in 2017. And, and the thing is with, with Koenigsegg, they just continue to push the boundaries of what's possible. Um, you know, they're talking about Jesco at the moment, which is Koenigsegg just delivered their first Jesco customer car. Uh, and that car is capable of a, a much greater top speed than, than what that was. Possibly one of the fastest road cars that will ever be produced uh, due to the homologation regulations and everything that kind of seem to get in the way these days of uh, making cars like this. We gave an award to a Koenigsegg here last year, and I remember the owner at the time gave us the and name Mark. of this door mechanism, and I can't remember it. You have, what's the name Tom, of the... Tom will tell you. Tom will tell you. The, the mechanism for the door, the way the door's open, what's the correct uh, terminology? Uh, dihedra something. I, I knew I knew it was a dihedra. Dihedra synchronous. Yeah, I feel quite dehydrated now. But I'm going to do what I, I like to do, Richard, if I may. May I just go and sit in the driver's seat? Of course. Please do. Absolutely. Have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Showing off that he can, that's what it well, is. <laughs> Come on, Richard, you can sit next to me if you want. We've done it in a Bentley. Come no, on, we've sat next to each other in a Bentley. No, I'd never get out. <laughs> no, it looks great. And it was, it was fascinating as you drove the car up, as you got out. Obviously, you pressed button B and everything unfolds itself. Now, is that a... Uh, can a customer do that or is it something you've got set up for display purposes? No, 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 a uh, customer can do that. There's a, a, a button marked with a ghost. And literally everything opens up. And everything opens up. Yeah, it's a fantastic thing. And, you know, there's so much craft that goes into these cars. One of the most impressive things that, that has taken me by storm really being part of this brand is looking at the things that you don't normally see every day. So things in the engine tray, even things under the, the front tub. The way you as you know you mentioned there, the way that the doors open, the way that the mirrors fold in. And actually when you get up close and personal to these cars, just the attention to detail in the carbon fibre. It, it, it really is something to be on. Curb weight, what are we talking about? How heavy is this thing? Yeah, I was going to say about 1500 milligrams, so really not a lot. And you've got two cup holders in here. <laughs> two, two cup holders, uh, two. Yeah. two cup holders. But I think the thing I notice, I, I get a bit claustrophobic sometimes in, in sports racing cars. I've sat in a couple of Group C cars, a 962 and a Ferrari, a P4. You sit inside them, um, and particularly the Jaguar, the XJ, XJR15. It's very claustrophobic. Yeah. Everything's very tight. This feels airy, it feels spacious, and it's not a gi gigantic car. The sills are not too wide to make it look comfortable to get in and out. It's a very comfortable car to drive, actually, whether that's actually the or if you're trashing it. It's a very comfortable car to drive, actually, whether that's actually the. Yeah, uh, on the, uh, do you do any driver training 
There isn't anything that's prescribed at the moment, but certainly as a, as a credit tech London offering, that's something that would be very crucial considering to offer our clients because, you know, the power that this thing puts down, having now experienced this car, is, is just mind blowing. I was going to ask her, is it a big well, deal? Yeah, you've got ridiculous power, ridiculous. You just feel that this is usable on uh, on British roads because some 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 cars have become so wide and big and you know, beautiful and powerful and everything else. But you sense that on British roads, maybe a bit of a handful getting around uh, tight narrow lanes. And, and this for me, it just feels quite compact and. Uh, it is it's very much a compact car. I mean, you'll have seen from our, our video that went live a couple of weeks ago. Uh, James is sadly not with us just yet, but you know, we drove this car around central London for, for two nights. Um, and it, it was, you know, apart from the old speed bump, there wasn't any problems. Um, very, very professional. Uh, it's very easy to drive at low speed. Uh, as Tom says, it's, it's very capable at high speed. And it's just, it's just a different experience. I mean, anyone that's ever driven a car is automatic program to either use paddles or a gear stick. And with this car, you just don't have to do that, which is quite, good, quite strange. And what about uh, distribution around the world, worldwide? I mean, we talked earlier about the CCX, the, the largest homologation worldwide. Yeah. It, it is a CCX. Yeah. And uh, these are obviously all homologated for worldwide distribution. Thanks. What's your biggest market? Uh, the biggest market for the US. Uh, the UK is Koenigsegg worldwide have only just about delivered 230 cars since the start yet, which is the first season for 2006. So in terms of numbers, it's relatively small, um, but it's something that we're very much passionate about, which is especially So what different models available right now? So Roger has small numbers, a lot now. So Roger is sold out. The, the last car has been delivered. The current lineup for Koenigsegg is the Jumeirah, which is a four-seater high-motion hypercar. Uh, the Jesco and uh, the CC50, which you can see the um, And you know, who knows what's on the horizon. Do you know much about the inspiration for the names? I, I do, yeah. So Jumeirah was uh, terrain. It basically translates terrain. Uh, the Jesco, which I absolutely love the story behind. Uh, Christian Bar, which which I think is is, is such a lovely note to his heritage. Um, yeah. one, one thing I've noticed is uh, it's come up in conversations, and forgive me for mentioning it's another manufacturer, but Pagani with the Zonda, they had to be upgraded. Well, and I, I, I think that's a really interesting approach, and it keeps people in the in the family, and it means that actually it's the spirit, really. It's 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 the owned car. The own file, yeah. and then you can keep it up to date.
I think with, with Koenigsegg, this, this, as I alluded to, there's so few cars in the way that, you know, you can't actually have that, that sort of desire to keep up to date. You know, that's the iPhone generation that we are in. Um, but because there's such special things and there's such limited numbers that really sometimes the only option is to upgrade rather than replace, you know, or just buy a Jessica and get it sold. So if you're fortunate enough to own a legacy model and you want to upgrade it in some way, the factory is really the only option you have in which to do that. I think as well, Richard, what's, what's quite interesting in um, Koenigsegg is a good example, and I, I would suggest Pagani's as well. Because they are small volume, highly specialised technology engineering um, companies, first and foremost, it, it's really nice to be able to meet the people behind the brand. And I had the good fortune of meeting Christian uh, a few weeks ago at Villa Nesta and having a cup of coffee with him. Just such a lovely, personable guy. And I think when you're buying into a brand, luxury, you're spending lots of money, the, the opportunity to meet the, the brains behind it, the person that's still involved, that owns it, it's, it's really special. For me, that's true luxury. Very much so. I think one of the things that really took me by surprise when we were asked out, James and I filming for the launch video, was that we were fortunate to get some time with Christian. <coughs> and we were just walking through the factory and, you know, a bit about me, my background before coming to represent Koenigsegg London, which is where I've been in Ferrari for nearly nine years. And uh, the path of that was cut me down the middle and I used to be Ferrari. But having had the opportunity to meet Christian and, and ask him the question that so many people said to me, run up to me going, how does it make you feel like to, 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 to the modern day Enzo Ferrari, right? Because this is drives the company, drives the office every single day. Um, and what took me by surprise was just how humble it was by that question. You know, there was no, there was no arrogance or anything like that. It was just so refreshing to get such a question. And the one thing I would say about Koenigsegg, which I've never thought with any other people before, is that you go to their facility and you feel this comfort. It really does feel like you're part of their family. So we are due to open the showroom a bit later on this year. Um, you know, for us, coming here today, going to the port was uh, the first opportunity to present all business in uh, essentially the hour and protect the future. Uh, very good small showroom, the team showroom in uh, Kensington. Possibly, but uh, but yeah. So that's that's where we're where we're at so far. We've had an incredible reception to the chief of business a couple of weeks ago. Um, we're just in the phase now of continuing to generate awareness, recruiting, um, but really awareness and promotion of business, which is exactly why we're here to, to share this kind of fabulous event with you guys. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's us. Um, so Kensington will be a small uh, showroom, so we need in terms of technical support. Yeah, we, we, we have plans to expand that up to the factory as well. Obviously, the top yeah. top yeah. Top yeah. Top technician. Yeah, um, yeah that's cool. Uh, in making uh, that part of the business grow. Um, watch the space for, for future developments. I mean, so when, when you order a Koenig deck, we do talk talking earlier about the spoke uh, at the moment, so today, today we're looking for four eight eight, 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 Dreaming pretty much of this moving from that. You know, bespoke events, different types of car, anything you can think of with the material. You know, there's, there's just too many things to this. Uh, you know, some of the things that really struck me 
things like goldies, which seems to be pretty, pretty popular. Um, different types of materials for interior possible chair the seats, and all, all kinds of things that you can think of. The thing that really impresses me with credit is something that we have to explain is it just kind of runs in the which is a process that could exist on the table. You see something that's not in the process that you can basically take when you put your eye to it, and uh, it just doesn't touch the And then they will remove the lacquer from it and give it that kind of metallic feeling. Now, that process can take anywhere from six to ten minutes. And it, essentially, you could have a car in It's an expensive option, but if the level of customization is perhaps overwhelmed with other codes that go to that's a problem. I this did win the award of Top Gear. Do you remember that, that um, edition where they got stuck in the French car park with three cars of gold wing doors? You know, and I guess that inspired the design of these doors to have some no chance of getting stuck inside. But, uh, well, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I, I, I'm a big fan. Um, I think the spirit of the company, the look of the car, the look of nature, the awards, the number of models that you build, and, and yeah, the background is lovely. I think it's, it's a real success story. So we wish you success. Thank you. Uh, okay, so London and all the places geographically. Um, good luck. Enjoy the setup, and uh, I'm sure you will be uh, you'll be planes leaving Friday, leaving London to find the factory around. Yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. Good luck. Thank you very much for bringing this up. Um, I shouldn't even though we can't buy it. Um, <laughs> well, this one you might be able to. Oh, well, there you go. Exactly. Oh, this is this is very well. Okay, I've settled it. So I'm Thank you very much. Thanks, Jensen.